Extractor fans in the showers tend to be pretty useless, in my opinion. I wanted something that would run the fans all the time on low speed so that any evaporating moisture throughout the day does not vent into the rest of the house. I wanted something that would just gradually suck out the damp air from the shower room outside. But obviously when you go into the shower I wanted the fans to automatically run at full pelt to um, extract the steam. So I came up with the idea of using an AT Tiny pulse width modulated um, switching regulator to control the fans and uh, this is what I did. It's a straightforward PWM circuit really. Um, there's a thermistor that senses the hot water go feed into the shower head. I've just attached that to a, a pipe that just uh, feeds the shower head. And there's one single switch which controls the mode of operation, just a momentary push button switch. And that switches it from uh, high to low to off. And it gives you the, the facility where you can program the fan speed when it's on low. And that works by you just press and hold the button for four seconds and it does what you've just seen there. It just fades the fans up and down. And when they're at a speed that you want them to run at continuously, a nice slow quiet speed you can just press the button and it programs that speed in and it stores that value in the EE prom I'm using the Arduino to program the AT Tiny let's plug this in ok we're in there <coughs> let's power up Just download it to the board. And that's it, that's programmed. And the LED's full on. Which would mean the fans were full on. Now if I ground this wire, this wire here is, would be the equivalent of the switch that we use to switch from high to low to off. If I just tap it on that ground there, that should be one state, another state, and that should be off. There we go. So that being programmed, I can plug it into our board. Let's unplug this. Move that out of the way because we're now done with that. Now, make sure I plug this in the right way around. That would be a disaster to get it the wrong way around. Okay, give some power. Okay, that's full on. So if we press and hold for four seconds, that should enter program mode. There we go, it turns the light off. Now it should start to ramp that light up and down, or what would be the fans, because you'd normally have the fans connected there. So you get to select now what speed you want your fans to run at. So let's go for something that's nice and quiet down there. Now we can switch from high speed fans to low speed fans to off. High, low, off. 
and if you hold, say you hold it for four seconds and you, you go into that program mode where it just ramps up and down and it stores that value in the EEPROM so if you power off and power back on again in fact I'll do that now if I power off and power back on it enters the low speed mode straight away now also the thermistor here that's designed to connect to the uh, or sit alongside the hot water feed to the shower so when it detects hot water going in the pipe I can just demonstrate that by yeah, put it on the bulb there that's warm enough to trigger it there we go now the run time on that is say if you're in the shower for say five minutes then the fan will run for the five minutes you're in the shower plus an extra five minutes afterwards so if you're in the shower for half an hour uh, then the total run time of the fan on full speed would be an hour that should go off in just a, a short while or it should switch back to low anyway there we go that's back down to low speed again now that's entering program mode as I say and the FET does not get warm at all <laughs> I'm quite impressed at how uh, cool that remains Select our uh, fan again. About there. Take a look at the circuit. The circuit runs on 12 volts. I didn't want to be doing any um, experimentation with the circuit on uh, mains voltage. So to keep it nice and safe, um, you want to use a current limited power source. So if you ever do have a fault condition, pass by going short, it shuts down safely. You don't want to be experimenting with any mains electricity in your shower. So this is really a um, book converter, a switch mode power supply. Uh, the 12 volts comes in and it's split and it feeds uh, into a 7805 which is a 5 volt regulator and that powers your AT Tiny and the 12 volt rail goes into a p-channel FET and then the standard book converter configuration for a switching regulator um, the AT Tiny has got two inputs there's um, one of the input lines is used for your switch and that's doing your switching from high speed to low speed to off and then into program mode and there's another input which is for the negative temperature coefficient thermistor and the thermistor is tied to ground and also your input switch you ground it so if either of those external leads to what you, you you know you'd mount this in something safe like a metal box but if either of those go to ground i.e. short to a cold water pipe or a hot water pipe then it's in a safe condition um, your signal lead, you only need one wire coming out, you can actually ground that. If you've got the, this thing common earthed, you can just ground that control wire to a pipe. So you've just got the one wire going to the switch that you can then tie onto a pipe. So you just pulse the switch and uh, that selects your mode of operation. Same again with your thermistor, one side of it's tied to ground. The other side goes into one of the uh, ATD converters on the AT Tiny and is also pulled up to 5 volts through a 1k resistor so it's a nice way to and safe way to operate that the output from the AT Tiny pulse width modulated output goes into a general purpose uh, NPN transistor and um, when the AT Tiny pulses a, a high output that turns your transistor on which 
grounds, well, takes to zero volts the, uh, the gate of the FET and that turns it on. Bear in mind it's a P channel. So when this transistor's turned off, your FET's turned off because it's pulled high by the 470 ohm resistor there. Um, there's a 10 ohm current limiting resistor there that just makes sure that when this transistor turns on, it just provides a a bit of current limit to the gate discharge so it doesn't blow the gate on the um, FET and you can use any transistor there for your just a general purpose NPN and be fine but the one I use there which is 2SC18115 um, I, I dug that out of an old second hand ATX power supply and um, well, it seemed to be quite a good transistor, it's got good gain so I, li I, I like that um, your IR, the MOSFET that I've used um, is an, an IRF an IRF 4905 um, they handle uh, stupidly high ridiculous currents um, right that goes into um, 50 micro henry uh, inductor and let's say standard book converter there is a wiki page for the book converter and I've got a a BYV 27100 which is a 2 amp fast um, shot key um, diode 470 microfarad app cap and uh, an LED indicator with a 1k resistor and your output to your fans now this output circuit you could actually modify it you could put uh, a series shunt resistor in um, um, voltage divider of a 2.4k and a 1k and 2.4k and a 1k again either side of that shunt resistor and you can feed that back into um, a couple of spare A to D converters either either on an AT tiny or an AT mega so you could do voltage and current sense obviously because the difference between those two voltages is what is, you know accumulated across that resistor and that'll give you your current reading so you could um, sense the voltage and current and use it as a battery charger but in the configuration that I've got here we're not too fussed about uh, having it regulated too closely because uh, obviously the output you can switch to 12 volts and you have a power in the fan and when it's just switched to low it's just you know any figure really it's just you're not really concerned about what the voltage is going to be you just trim in your low voltage mode so that the fans are nice and quiet um, so I'm using 12 volt fans in this system um, these are quite nice if you can get hold of these this is a centrifugal fan but if you can mount mount that in the ceiling and um, exhaust that out somewhere to the outside they uh, they um, pump a lot of air so they're very good if you can find those on eBay centrifugal fan like that that'll do you, that'll do you fine take a look at some of the waveforms on the scope I'm sure most of you know it already but we'll have a quick peek There's a couple of things on that board that aren't actually on the diagram. There's the I've put a fuse in um, reverse polarity protection diode, and um, I put some header pin. I put some pins around the AT tiny so I can do a like a firmware upgrade. I just find it quite amusing to have a firmware upgrade available on the shower controller. Uh, I've also put some links in. Uh, that link there is just a disconnect for the 5 volt supply to the AT Tiny and there's also a, a disconnect for the output from the AT Tiny it's quite funny that when you're if you program an AT Tiny in circuit in this circuit it would actually flash the bulb because the bulb the output is connected to one of the program pins okay
So what we've got here, we've got the, the two traces. The bottom trace here is the output voltage and the top trace is the PWM waveform. And that's just running on low at the moment. So if I go into program mode, so I'll hold it for four seconds. There we go, it turns off. And then it goes into the ramp where it enables us to select our uh, fan speed. So as you can see, that's the uh, voltage going up and down, and that's the pulse width varying. I just press the switch again, that'll program a, a level for me. About there. I'll take you through the code a little bit, although it's not very optimised. I've not um, used many commands here that are ingenious. Right, I've fairly well commented what's going on, really. Um, just standard stuff. The only thing that's quite strange, in order to generate the 31 kilohertz um, pulse width frequency that I'm using, I've changed the timers uh, on the AT Tiny, and that does upset any time critical commands that you may use if you're using the mills command or delay, anything like that. And this delay that I've got down here, yeah, that's about that's about one second. That, um, yes, uh, the reason I had that in there, I added that in late on. Really, that was really for noise suppression from the um, the the input selector switch. I found that if that cable, if the cable between the board and where you put the switch, if that was a long cable, it could pick up RF. Um, easy to press by just using a cap uh, on the on the input, but then the Arduino started. Sorry, the the AT Tiny started to read that cap as a um, as a switch press when you first powered it up. So the idea of putting the delay in there was to give just a few milliseconds for that cap to charge. Even though I only tried it with a very small cap, it was something like a 0 0.022 microfarads, and that. Um, that AT Tiny was powered up for an executing code faster than it took that cap to charge. <laughs> I was very impressed. Um, so I put that in there just to compensate for that. Right, uh, it's f fairly straightforward, really. Um, uh, just routines for setting different fan speeds. The only bit of borrowed code here really is there was a routine for uh, um, fading the. Uh, I can't remember what the routine was actually used for now. Oh, yeah. There you go. High power control with Arduino and a tip 120. But um, that was used there to fade up and fade down. I quite like that idea. So um, I think my what I was thinking about at the time was a bit more long-winded than that but that's that's neat and say it stores the whatever value you select for your slow span fan speed it stores that in the EEPROM mm, that's about it that's it really um, thanks for watching Hopefully somebody found that useful. I'll catch you next time.